Wow, so it seems like the Eagles could have a very real chance to pull off a blockbuster trade very soon, as some news just came out regarding Miles Garrett's situation in Cleveland, and the new development has people thinking that a move to Philadelphia could be a real possibility. Meanwhile, Eagles defensive tackle Jordan Davis has found himself in an interesting situation, as a huge falloff in usage last week has people wondering if Davis may have possibly been demoted. Plus, the Eagles will face the Bengals in just a few days, and defensive coordinator Vic Fangio previewed the matchup, while he also talked about Sidney Brown and his recent return, ahead of what is going to be a very big game for the second year safety so we're going to talk about that and all the other latest eagles news starting right now what's up everybody welcome to the philly fan 21 channel if you're new i'm evan and i cover all things philadelphia eagles and let's start off with a somewhat surprising roster move that the birds just made yesterday as they released veteran wide receiver paris campbell off their active roster after he was just playing heavy snaps on offense three games ago and they also released defensive back jt woods off the practice squad and while it is interesting that campbell has been let go after seeing significant playing time, this does make complete sense, and it was probably going to always happen like this, as they obviously got their star guys back in AJ Brown and Devontae Smith, and now with the rookie Anaya Smith set to make his return more than likely this week, they had to clear up a spot so he could be placed on the active roster, so Campbell's gone and will most likely return to the practice squad, assuming another team doesn't pick him up. And while Anaya Smith will make his return to action most likely this week, a guy who just made his return last week is the second year man Sidney Brown, and I think it's safe to say that he did pretty good in his first game back since tearing his ACL as he made the most of his very limited role playing well on special teams and then when he did get in there on defense at the end of the game in garbage time he made his presence felt as he had a pass breakup that probably could have been an interception and overall Sid winded up as the second highest graded eagle in their win over the Giants so again it's safe to say that there was a solid first game back for the second year safety and on Tuesday defensive coordinator Vic Fangio talked about Sid and the importance of the snaps that he did get on defense as well as how his role may change as time goes on. Yeah, really important. It's good for those guys to get a handful of plays. You know, in Sydney's case, he hadn't played in over, you know, since whenever he got hurt last year. So it, it is very important for those guys to get out there, get a feel for what it's really like. You know, the, the speed of the game from practice to a real game. So it is good to get that done. Like what, what role did you see him kind of carving out over the coming weeks? We'll see. Um, you know, anytime you say get a roll, that means somebody comes out. So um, he still needs to practice more, um, play a little bit more meaningful snaps in practice. He's not totally honed up on what to do, but he's done a great job of paying attention to meetings, being engaged all through his rehab. And I do think whenever he does get a chance to play, it will be quick transition as far as mentally goes. I definitely do think Sidney Brown will end up earning some sort of rotational role on the defense in the coming weeks. Now, like Fangio said, I definitely still think he needs more time and he's got to be eased into things, but as I said before, Sid is too talented to not play at all on defense, so I think it's only a matter of time before he's legitimately contributing. And I'm honestly really hoping that this week specifically, he's able to at least get a few snaps on defense, preferably on the plays where his brother Chase Brown is in for Cincinnati. As I'm sure many of you know that this upcoming game between the Eagles and Bengals is a reunion of sorts, as Sidney Brown will be facing his twin brother Chase Brown who plays running back for the first time in their NFL careers. And I think this is particularly cool just because we have the chance to see Sid and Chase go directly up against one another, as of course one plays offense and the other plays defense, so this is certainly going to be really interesting to watch. And just after the Giants game and ahead of the matchup, Sid talked about what it's going to be like facing his brother this week, and what he said I thought was super interesting. You in Cincinnati, that's a pretty big Oh my god, yeah. No, no doubt. It's, it's, I got my brother on the other side of the ball, but at the end of the day it's just the Cincinnati Bengals versus the Philadelphia Eagles, so I'm not going to make any more than that. And just play for what it is, you know what I mean. So, so when does the? Can you hang on one second? So when does the conversation between you and your brother stop this week? <laughs> Dude, we were talking last night, and he's like, you know, we can still talk like over the game and stuff, but he's like, we just can't talk football because we just cannot talk football because it, I don't know, and it's hard not to because that's, that's what we do, like that's our everyday life. But uh, when it's gonna cut off? probably tonight I'm gonna call them because they just finished up their game too and we'll check in for a little bit and then we'll probably chat about what, what we're gonna do and stuff and I'll see him at the end of the week and after the game and stuff so just one week it's one week just one week um it'll be tough but that's my guy you know somebody I talk to every single day almost like my therapist in so many ways so um <laughs> it's gonna be tough like I don't even know I haven't even thought about it yet but as I said earlier in the week I was like it's gonna be a breakup low-key it's gonna be like a breakup between the two of us so <laughs> You know, a one week break up, it'll be all right. We'll both go our own ways, play, you know, study our game plan, 
play the game, and then after we'll be back like we never left. So no, I'm, I'm excited for it because it's something that we've been looking forward to since we were little kids. And um, no, it's just it's it's not surreal, but it's it's we expected it. Um, we worked for it, and you know it's, it's gonna be cool to have that moment with him on the field. Definitely hoping that Sid doesn't make it more than what it is heading into this game, but also I would definitely love to see Sid get a big hit on his brother if the opportunity arises, so we'll see what happens, but again, this is just going to be a very, very cool thing to watch, these two brothers going up against each other. And speaking of just the Eagles matchup with the Bengals in general, I mean, this is going to be a very interesting and important one. You know, the Bengals are a team that has a ton of talent and firepower, and coming into the year, they had a ton of expectations, but as per usual, they started the season pretty slow, and they currently sit at just 3-4 and four on the season after a close win over the Browns. But I do definitely think that the Bengals are better than their record shows as they're coming off back-to-back -back wins like the Eagles and building a bit of momentum. And they obviously still have some really talented players, especially on offense. And just ahead of the matchup, both Nick Sirianni and Vic Fangio talked about Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, and the challenges they and the rest of the Bengals offense presents. What impresses you most uh, about Joe Burrow? Yeah, he, he's a really good, obviously a really good player. He's done it at a high level for a very long time. I mean, you know, thinking back on just that team that he had in, in college, he still had some one of the guys that he was throwing to in college and just how fun that was, <clears throat> excuse me, to watch. Um, and yeah, just, just think, you know, he just plays at a high level each and every year. And uh, and this is a good, this is a really good offense. Um, a lot of respect for this offense with the weapons they have. And then obviously uh, Joe Burrow. Well, I mean, you start with Joe Burrow. Uh, Chase and Higgins, and those are big time players at their positions, top of the line, and and they've been running the ball better this year. So, you know, they're really good. You know, they scored a bunch of points against Baltimore, lost the one point, I think it was 26 or 27, 26 against Kansas City. They're really good. There's no doubt that this game is going to present a huge challenge for the Eagles defense, but I think the key to them holding up and having another good performance is going to be to just continue doing what they've done these past couple of games and just building momentum off of that. And that's playing tighter on the receivers and coverage, tackling well, containing the run, and then most importantly, forcing the opposing offense into passing situations and then getting after the quarterback. Now, obviously, that's all a lot easier said than done, especially against an offense as talented as Cincy has, but it's what the Eagles have done the past two weeks, and the Bengals haven't exactly done a a great job of keeping Joe Burrow upright either. So again, I think this is going to have to be another game where Jalen Carter, Nolan Smith, Josh Sweat, and those guys on the defensive line make a huge impact and get to the quarterback. However, one guy who may continue to see a downturn in production and playing time, if that happens, is defensive tackle Jordan Davis. As this past week against the Giants, Davis didn't do much anything, and he also didn't play very much, as he was on the field for just 12 defensive snaps. So that led to many people asking the question of whether or not Davis has possibly been demoted, and if him seeing less snaps is going to be a trend moving forward, but Vic Fangio seemed to shut that idea down as he commented on the situation during his Tuesday presser. Yeah, I think he's handling his role good. You know, we roll those guys, as you know, Clint does a good job of rolling those guys based upon the way the game is going and what type of game it is, and especially once we got the uh, two or three score lead there at whatever point that was in the second half, you know, we started rolling guys and played the other guys in the nickel stuff. I do think it's clear that Davis playing less isn't exactly a demotion, and it's rather just a result of the situations the Eagles defense was in last game as they were in a lot more obvious pass situations, and as we all know, JD is more of a prototypical run-stuffing nose tackle as opposed to guys like Jalen Carter, Milton Williams, and the surprisingly impressive second-year man Moro Jomo who have much better pass rushing ability. So again, I think Davis only playing 12 snaps is just a result of the situation the Eagles were in with plenty of obvious pass plays for the Giants, but in the future, if there's a game where a team is really running the ball a lot, I think there's no doubt that you'll see Jordan Davis in there a lot more often. And in this game against the Bengals, I expect things to be a lot closer in terms of the score than they were last week. However, again, I do think one of the keys to the Eagles defense having a successful game is going to be the pass rush, and they're just going to have to find a way to keep their high level play from the last few weeks. And on Tuesday, Vic Fangio talked about what exactly has gone into the revival of the Eagles pass rush, and it was pretty interesting. So don't worry, we're going to get into that and so much more in just a minute. But real quick, I do want to say if you are enjoying this video and don't want to miss any other Eagles coverage or content just like this coming throughout the rest of the season, then make sure you subscribe and also really, really importantly, turn on notifications so you're notified instantly when one of these 
these videos is uploaded, trust me, you're not going to miss any of the Eagles coverage or content I got coming on this channel moving forward. I cover the Eagles pretty much daily on this channel. So again, if you guys don't want to miss any of that and you want to stay up to date on all the latest news, then make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. And also while you're at it, make sure you drop a like because that also really helps me out a ton. And it's also completely free, just like subscribing. So let's see if we can get to 700 likes in this video. And with all that being said, let's get back into the video. So as I was saying, Vic Fangio talked about the pass rush on Tuesday and explain what exactly has caused the positive turnaround. Yeah, I think in this past game, it was a good mix of uh, coverage complementing the rush. You know, he, he had to hold the ball a little longer than he would have liked to, and it gave our guys a better chance and more time to get there. And I do think that was, in this past game, a big part of it. It's definitely been an all-around effort to get the pass rush playing at this level. Like he said, there's no doubt that the coverage of the guys in the secondary has a lot to do with it. And it was just a group effort, but I also think a lot of it's just finding their mojo and getting more comfortable as the season goes on. And a lot of it also is just them getting chemistry together and working together as a unit to get the sack. So again, hopefully they continue their high-level play and they can have success in this game against Joe Burrow and the Bengals. But even with the Eagles' recent high-level play coming from their defensive line and their edge rushers, that hasn't stopped them from being in some crazy trade rumors recently. As the birds have been linked to Browns star Miles Garrett in the recent weeks and days, and I actually did just make a video speculating on this a week ago, and back then it seemed like this was a complete long shot, but now the possibility of Garrett coming to the Eagles seems just a little bit more realistic. As a report came out a couple days ago from Monday Morning Quarterback, saying that teams are fishing for Miles Garrett, and it seems like Cleveland could be open to the possibility of trading the star pass rusher, as of course they own a ton of money in the coming seasons, along with their severely underperforming quarterback Deshaun Watson, who all also, his season just came to an end a few days ago with an Achilles injury, because I mean, obviously, this situation has gone from bad to worse, and with no real end in sight, it would make sense for the Browns to get some compensation for Garrett and try and get what you can to move towards a rebuild in the near future. And if Garrett is in fact available, you have to believe that Howie Roseman definitely has at least checked in on the situation, as he said in the past, he's always going to do his due diligence on every possible opportunity to improve the roster and acquire more talent. And obviously, if the Eagles were somehow able to get Garrett, that'd just be insane, because like I've talked about this entire video, the Birds pass rush has really started to find their rhythm and they're playing a lot better recently, but they don't really have that bona fide star like Garrett is, so if they added him to the mix, then that could be legitimately scary for opposing offenses. Now, do I think the Eagles will end up getting Miles Garrett? Still, probably not, but I definitely do think it is a possibility. It's no doubt a lot more likely than it was last week when I made that video, and I think it's definitely a situation to monitor moving forward, but that being said, what do you guys think? Is there any chance that the Eagles could somehow land Miles Garrett in a huge trade, you can let me know your thoughts down in the comments. But now, briefly moving on to the Eagles offense entering this game, they're going to have to continue building the positive momentum that they've gathered the past few weeks as well, as of course Jalen Hurts has been much better and has not turned the football over, while the return to A.J. Brown has created a lot more big plays through the air, and obviously they've been fantastic on the ground running the football with Saquon Barkley. And the good news is that it seems like the run game is going to continue to be a huge part of their offense moving forward, as Nick Sirianni just said this on WIP Radio. Nick, are we a running football team? damn right <laughs> yes uh, I, I think you know i think you saw that that you know anytime you go over uh, 200 yards rushing you can you can say that uh for sure i think that we've been able to run um you know since i've been here we've been able to run the football efficiently and john we we, we played some fullback football i saw that's oh, awesome. No. Lead oh, ISO no. all day, baby. <laughs> Blow him up. I definitely love that Nick said this because the fans have really been on him about running the football lately, obviously, and that's where a lot of the criticism has come from. And the run game has also obviously worked very well when they do commit to it. So it's just great to hear Nick hopefully pretty much confirm that they will in fact stick with the run and lean on it more heavily moving forward and that this is part of their identity. And hopefully they see a lot more success on the ground in this next game against the Cincinnati Bengals. And of course, you guys already know that I'm going to be covering all the news and rumors leading into that matchup. So again, if you guys don't want to miss any of that, make sure you subscribe and also really, really importantly, turn on those notifications. It's all completely free. So again, if you want to stay up to date on all the latest Eagles news, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and also drop a like to show some support if you did enjoy this video, because it really does help me out a ton. Again, let's see if we can get to 700 likes today. And also leave a comment just regarding anything else that I talked about in this video. And if you want to watch another video going over some stuff from earlier in the week, you can check this out right here. And now with all that being said, said that's pretty much all I got for this one guys so thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.